Hey there. In this video, I'm going to be playing with this cheap ultrasonic transceiver that claims to be waterproof. So I want to figure out if it's waterproof. And naturally, if it's waterproof, I want to also figure out, can it operate underwater? To achieve this, I'll be using an ESP32 board, and this will let me transmit the data wirelessly. To get started, I'm going to have to do some wiring, first taking note at the pins at the back, and then I have to take note of some of the pins on the Arduino board. The pins I'll be using in this case are the VIN, the ground pin, pin 5, and pin 18. The first pin I'll be hooking up is the 5 volt pin to VIN. This should give a 5 volt supply. And then to complete the power supply, I'll be wiring ground to ground. Then I'll be connecting the RX trigger pin to pin number 5. And the echo pin to pin number 18. And last but not least, we will be connecting the sensor to the board. The last thing to do before testing is to power it up and push some code. I'll throw what I used either in the description or a pinned comment, and we'll get ready to start testing. The first thing I'm going to do is measure the container I'm using, and for the first test I'm just going to keep it empty, with no water. I just want to see if it's working in the first place. And it looks like the sensor is functioning. The only issue is I can't keep the thing steady enough to get repeatable measurements, so I went ahead and cut a hole in the lid to help keep it steady and see if we can get repeatable measurements. And once steadied, we're able to get a little bit of precision grouped up around 27 centimeters. Now it's time to fill the container with water and give the sensor a dip. And at first I thought it was working, but as I moved the sensor around, up and down, around, wasn't updating. It seemed to be stuck around 20 centimeters and I wasn't quite sure why it wasn't updating. So it was back to the drawing board and I realized I overlooked quite a few things. You see, as the sensor sends out pings, it calculates the distance based off the time it takes to receive the echo and the speed at which sound travels through the medium. In air, the speed of sound is around 340 meters per second, but in water, it's much faster at around 1480 meters per second. Now this would explain if the measurements were inaccurate and way off, but it doesn't quite explain why it's not updating. And for that, I completely overlooked the blind zone. Apparently, as the transceiver switches from sending out pings to listening, if the object is placed too close, by the time it switches to listening, the sound wave may have already have passed. And in air, this sensor seems to have a blind zone rated around 25 centimeters. And with water increasing the speed of sound by about 4x, I would anticipate that the blind zone in water would be about 4x or around 1 meter. All this is to say we need a bigger container. And so I went to the biggest water container I have, and that just so happens to be the bathtub. When I measured the distance from the sensor to the plug, it just so happened to be around 88 centimeters. So I thought, success, right? It seems to be working as intended. But when I took the sensor off the mount I made and started moving it around by hand, I noticed something strange. Occasionally I would get the measurement I expected, close to 110 centimeters, but for the most part I seemed to be stuck again at around 88, 90 centimeters, and I wasn't sure why it wasn't updating. So I had to go back to the drawing board. And surprise, surprise, there was another property I overlooked. This time the property was the cone angle of the sensor, which is around 30 degrees. And what this means is if we were to draw it out, we could see at some point the sound waves are likely to hit the sides of the bathtub before it hits the back of the bathtub. And that distance from the sensor to where it's likely to hit the side walls of the tub just so happens to be pretty close to 89 centimeters, around 93 centimeters to be exact. And this seemed to explain why we kept getting that same number over and over again. So this means not only do we need a deeper container, but we also need to get a wider container to test this thing out if it's truly working as intended. So I headed out to the deepest bathtub I could find, a lake, and I went ahead and conducted another test. And since my measuring tape just ain't gonna cut it here, I ended up using a fish finder to get a number to try and compare to. Here it seems to think 1.8 meters. I then stuck the sensor into the big bathtub, and I was pleasantly surprised by the results. When pointed straight down, we seemed to get pretty close to 1.8 meters. 
to wrap things up, I'm going to revisit the objectives from the beginning. And the first question I had is, is it waterproof? And the answer to that is yes. If you dip it in water, it's not going to fry it. And then the follow-up question is, well, if it's waterproof, can it operate underwater? And the answer to that appeared to be yes, but you need to modify the code to account for the speed of sound and water. The body of water has to be deep enough to not get affected by the blind zone. And then lastly, considering the cone angle, the body of water needs to be wide enough not to get interference. With all that said, thank you for watching. I definitely learned something today, and I hope maybe you learned something as well.